Welcome to part two of Excel Array Formula Series 14. Hey, next we want to calculate the expected returns for the whole portfolio. Now I'm actually going to highlight these rows right here and hide them so we have a little bit more room. Now, and uh, as we saw in the last uh, video, we had different states of economy we're estimating for the future. Boom, good, poor, bust. And here's the probabilities for each. Then here's our weights, and here's the returns we've estimated for each stock given each uh, economic state. And now we want to use all of these variables here to calculate our expected returns for the portfolio. To multiply weight times return times probability, and the long way would be to highlight the cells, and then equals this weight locked going down, so F4, F4, times, oh, this weight locked going to the side, but not down, so F4, I forgot the shift, times this relative cell reference right there, and then Control Enter. That is not an array formula, that's just a quick way to populate the cells. I click in the last cell and hit F2. Did it work? <gasps> Yeah, it did. Now, to get the expected returns for the portfolio, we simply add them up. Alt equals, and then I highlight these ranges right here. Now, notice we did, uh, in essence, this range times this range times this whole range right here. So we could just do this in all in one cell using an array formula. I'm going to scoot over here a little bit and do the keyboard shortcut for auto sum. Alt equals, and now we will highlight. Highlight our returns times our weights times our probabilities there. And actually, you can do it in any order. That formula right there, if you hold Control and Shift and Enter, just like that in one cell, you've calculated the expected return for the portfolio. Pretty amazing. All right, now, that was uh, expected return for the portfolio. Let's do standard deviation. But we're going to start by calculating the weight and the return and adding up. So we'll actually have a return for each state. Boom, good, poor, bust. So let's highlight this whole range here. And in the cell up in the top, we type equals and click on the weight and lock it going down times the return. This is a relative cell reference right there. And then Control Enter. Now we simply can add these up, highlight that range right there, and Alt equals. Hit F2 to check. Sure enough, it got it right. So those are the actual returns if each one of these states occurs. And we're going to need these when we calculate. Uh, that's the first thing we need when we're calculating our standard deviation of the portfolio. Now let's hide a bunch of rows because we don't need any of this anymore. Zip. Right click, hide. That way we have a much better view of all. And in fact, I'll move this too. There we go. We can almost see everything. There we go. We got all our arrows. Now, let's see if we can calculate uh, the thing we just did, the return of the state occurs in an array formula. I'm going to highlight just the first cell, Alt equals. And what we want is we want for each uh, row here, because we're going to copy this formula down, we want our returns times our weights. And those weights, when we copy this formula down, we need those weights locked. So I'm going to hit F4, F4. Control-Shift-Enter, and then copy it down. Oh, there you go. So that's much faster than the way we just did it. Now, here, the next step in calculating standard deviation is you need the return right here minus the expected return. Well, we've done arrays for both of these, so let's put it all together here. Click in this cell. Alt equals. I'm going to say the top weights locked going down times that row of returns for that state right there. So that'll give me that number right there. But I need to subtract. And here we're going to do the expected return, which we just did a moment ago, equals SUM. And that's um, actually each one of these ranges. That one times the weights times the probability. So it's the returns, all the returns. And these 
All of these are going to need to be locked in all directions when we copy and close parentheses right there. Now, that is our array formula when we enter it, Control Shift Enter, that'll work. That's calculating the return for the state, and this is calculating the actual expected return for the whole portfolio. Control Shift Enter, and then click and drag down. Wow, very good. So there we have our return of the state occurs. Now, what about, oh, we, we need to square it. Well, watch this. I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to click here and hit F2 and then copy this whole thing. Control, actually, I'll copy the whole thing, including the equal sign. Control C and then escape because I don't want to wreck that array formula. Then I'm going to click right here and hit F2 to put it in edit mode and then Control V. Now, this column of numbers is just going to take this and square it. So I'm going to put a parenthesis there and a parenthesis there, and then caret 2, control shift enter, and then copy it down. Hey, that's looking pretty good there. Now the next thing we need to do, now the next, the next thing we need to do is square that. And by the way, what we're doing here is we're successively creating more and more complicated array formulas. So hopefully when we get to the end, we have some formula that we can just plop into one cell. But here, let's do our same trick again. I'm going to click here, F2, highlight that whole thing right there, Control-C, Escape, not to, so we don't wreck that. By the way, if you just hit Enter, oh, look at that. You could control shift enter and it will work. Now I'm going to click here and put F, hit F2 to get into edit mode and then control V. And now, oh, I need to multiply this whole thing times the probability. And the way I'm going to do that is I actually have to put this thing in parentheses. Close parentheses. And then at the end, I'm going to hit multiplication symbol. And there's that probability because I want to copy this formula down. Control shift enter and then click and drag. Finally, I need to sum all these. And actually, I could uh, Alt equals all of those. And then in this cell right here, take the square root equals square root. Square root. And click right there, Control Enter. And that actually is our standard deviation. But what we'd like to do is take all 1, 2, 3, 4, put those four formulas inside of a sum, and then that sum inside a square root. So we're actually going to be a little tricky here. I'm going to scroll down here. And I'm going to uh, actually I'll do the equals SQRT, open parentheses, SUM, open parentheses. And I actually need 1, 2, 3, 4 formulas inside of this sum separated by columns. So we're going to do a little trick here. I'm going to click right there, because it's hard to go from here to a formula, here to a formula. Actually, we, we could do that, but I'm going to do this little trick. I'm going to hit a space right there. That actually makes it not a formula anymore. When I click over there, oh, look, it's showing. Now I'm going to click in this cell in F2. And I'm going to very carefully scoop all of that out, Control-C, Escape, and then click down here, Control-V, and then Comma. Then I'm going to click up in this cell and F2 and very carefully highlight that whole formula, Control-C, Escape. And I'm going to click End here where that comma is. I'm going to put it into Edit Mode. And if you hit F2, it'll always place you at the end of the uh, formula. And then I'm going to Control-V comma, then I'm going to click back up here, F2, highlight that whole little range, there, that whole little formula right there without the equal sign, Control C, Escape. Click in this cell F2, oh, and it brings me right to the end, Control V. Then I'm going to click in this uh, cell here. I have one last thing to add to this massive formula. F2, very carefully highlight it, scooping it all out, Control C, Escape. Click in this cell, F2. It's at the end. Oh, I forgot the comma. I'll put comma, Control V. Now I need to put close parentheses, close parentheses. Now I need to go, if I hit Enter, right? Oh, yeah, it's still a uh, text string. So if I click right at the beginning. So I'm going to hit F2, which puts it in edit mode. But that puts me at the end. So now I'm going to, while in edit mode, in a text string, because this has a space in front of the equal sign, I'm going to Control Home. That gets me to the very top, and then I'm going to delete, backspace, backspace. OK, I got all those spaces gone. Now I'm going to Control-Shift-Enter. No way.